Hi, I'm Jack from Jack's Films. Recently, I held a 48-hour film festival where participants had to make a parody, music video, or sketch in just 48 hours. Somehow, it became such a hit that Adobe asked me to make a series of videos breaking down some of my essential workflows for my parody projects. So get ready, get excited, because in this video, we're gonna take a look at properly keying a green screen, as well as some effects, transitions, and auto reframe sequences. Let's go! If you've watched any of my videos before, especially the parody music videos, you'll know that I love to utilize my green screen. Using a green screen seems simple enough, but there are a couple things you need to make sure you do before you shoot. Number one, make sure there is plenty of light on your green screen and try to minimize the amount of shadows being cast onto it. Number two, don't wear anything green or anything that will reflect the green off the green screen. If you follow these simple rules, you will find green screen success. Starting off from Premiere, I have my green screen footage from Mansion on my timeline, and under the Effects tab, I'm going to search for Ultra Key and drop that right onto my footage. Now, because I have some shadows behind me, I'm going to grab a part of the screen where there's shadow present using the Key Color Eyedropper. Right away, it removes a decent amount of my green screen, but at the top, you can still see some artifacting, so I'm going to refine the mat to make it a bit cleaner. From the Output drop-down menu, choose Alpha Channel, which will show you a mat of your key. White are the areas you want to keep, black are the areas you want to remove. Under Setting, you can keep it Default, Relaxed, Aggressive, or Custom, which will do different things, but for this example, I'm going to choose Custom. Tool down matte generation and start playing with these values a bit until your subject is completely white and your background is completely black. I wish there were an exact science to this, but since every green screen and lighting setup is going to be different, you'll just have to dial it in on your own. Now, tool down matte cleanup, where you'll have the opportunity to clean the matte even more. If you need or want to, you can mess around with spill suppression and color correction, but I find just the matte tabs do a good enough job. Switch your output back over to composite, and now we're done. For faster chroma key work, especially on a project where you shot everything at once, you can right-click Ultra Key and choose Save Preset, which will allow you to drag and drop the preset onto the rest of your footage, so it all looks the same. Now that we've done all our green screen work, the last steps we're going to take are adding some effects and exporting our masterpiece for the world to see. Of course, when it comes to effects, there are thousands of third-party plugins you can use to really spice up your piece, but no matter what effect you're using, I would recommend using it on an adjustment layer instead of on the clip directly. This way of working is called a non-destructive workflow, which basically gives you the ability to move the effects freely around the timeline without baking them into individual clips. For this example, I'm going to show you a very simple effect that can be used as a transition as well as flare for your video. Search your effects for levels, then drop a levels adjustment onto your adjustment layer. Find the joining point of two clips that you want to transition between and drop a keyframe on white input level. Then, make two more keyframes on either side of the first keyframe. Now, turn the middle keyframe input level down super low, and when you play it back, you'll have a highlight bloom type transition that you can use to get you in and out of various scenes. You can also use the same method to do highlight pumps to the beat of your track. Set three white input keyframes a few frames apart from each other, and turn the middle keyframe down to about 150 this time. Now you'll have nice screen flashes that you can pepper in all over your timeline. Because we worked non-destructively, we can copy and paste this adjustment layer across multiple clips and not have to worry about baking in any effects. Obviously, there are hundreds of effect combinations you can use inside of Premiere, so definitely play around with stuff to see how it works. Now that we've got all our effects in, it's time to export this bad boy. I know that I want to get this in front of as many eyes as possible, so I'm going to plan on exporting this in 16x9 for YouTube and Twitter, 1x1 for Instagram, and 9x16 for TikTok. Normally, this would be a really annoying thing to deal with, but Adobe has this convenient little feature called Auto Reframe Sequence that will make your life so much simpler. 
All you have to do is find your sequence in the project panel, right click on it, and choose Auto Reframe Sequence, which will give you a dialog box with some options. Under Aspect Ratio, tell Premiere what you're aiming for. In this case, I'll leave it on square one-to-one. -one. Under Motion Tracking, you're going to let Premiere know what kind of motion exists in your video. If you're doing some type of fast action piece, you might want to choose Faster Motion. Under that, I like to choose Nest Clips, which will give me the manual control of adjusting the reframe afterwards. Click Create, and Premiere will create the new sequence, analyze the timeline, and auto-reframe everything for you based on what it thinks is the most important thing to view in frame. I'm not claiming this is an instant solution and will be perfect every single time, but it definitely saves a lot of time by doing all the annoying grunt work for you. Now, all you have to do is scrub through the timeline and make some micro adjustments to the clips that may have messed up, and you're done! Now you can export your video for all the various social media platforms, and it wasn't a huge pain for you. Wow, I can barely see your green screen anymore. Looks like you keyed it out perfectly. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you check out my other tutorials I have right here on Adobe's channel.